What's up everybody, Max Parker here, and it is March 3rd, and that means the Nintendo Switch is officially on shelves and officially in people's hands. So what is the Nintendo Switch? How is it different from other things Nintendo has done? Well, it turns out it's really different from anything that Nintendo has done. It's different from anything any game company has really ever done. This thing is kind of like a home console slash mobile platform hybrid. So the way it works is out of the box, which costs $300, the Nintendo Switch comes with the, the tablet gamepad, the two left and right controllers, which are called Joy-Con, and that's Joy-Con is both singular and plural, Joy-Con. Comes with the left and right, which can be used to play games and used as its own controller for multiplayer games. And it comes with a home dock, which connects to your TV, and the real genius thing about this is you can just pop it right in to the dock, which is connected to the TV, and boom, the game you're playing shows up on the TV. Turns out you have somewhere to go, you just take it right out of the dock, and now it's a mobile platform. So is this thing worth $300? That really remains to be seen. Uh, you're really, it's kind of like an Apple product in a way, because you're paying for something that you really can't get anywhere else. You're paying for the idea behind it. It's not, it doesn't have the power of say a PS4 or an Xbox One or a high grade gaming PC. It's not that kind of system. You're really paying for the idea and just the mobility of it. And that works. That really, the, the idea that you can take it anywhere on the go and or just play at home that idea works flawlessly. I mean, as soon as you plug it in, your game's on, on the screen. As soon as you unplug it, boom, it does. There's no pause. There's, it's exactly how you left it from the couch. If, if you hop in an Uber, hop in a bus, you're exactly where you left off. It's not yet perfect. We don't know what to, what to expect with this system down the line. Right now, there really aren't that many fantastic games out for it. There's Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is already regarded as one of the best games pretty much of all time. Definitely going to be considered as one of the best games of the year. But other than that, there's a party game called 1-2 Switch that the whole idea behind it is just put it in, in a party atmosphere and it'll get people playing. What's nice about the Switch is it is a multiplayer platform right out of the box. Other than that, there really aren't any big system sellers other than Zelda. Uh, Mario Kart 8, which we've already seen on the Wii U, is coming out in a couple months. Plus we have a new Mario, but that's not coming out until the holiday season. So there's a lot of question marks that are still surrounding this system. The other thing to consider is the price. Like I said, it is $300, but there are additional things that you can buy that don't come in the box. You can get a pro-style controller, which has a layout of like an Xbox One controller, that costs $70. If you wanna buy more Joy-Con, you can get a two pack for $90. If you wanna get another dock to hook it up to another TV in your house, that's another $90. So these peripherals that don't come in the box are really pricey. So sure, the box comes with everything you'll need. You really won't need anything else. But if you want those additional features, you're gonna to have to spend some money. And there are just some strange design choices when it comes to this. There's a kickstand that feels really flimsy because you can set this on a table, disconnect the Joy-Con and just play that way. But this kickstand, uh, I'm really curious how long this is gonna last. There's, and the other weird design choice is the charger is on the bottom. So if you play this on the tabletop mode, you won't be able to charge it. And the battery life is only between two and six hours depending on what you're playing and what brightness settings you have going. Uh, so if you want this to last for a really long trip, you're going to have to bring some battery backups. But as a concept right now, this is, it's, like I said, it is unlike anything else. It's not like a PlayStation 4. It's not like an Xbox One. I wouldn't even call them direct competitors. It's kind of in its own lane, which Nintendo has always done. Play this game. I can't believe we're gonna have cowboy hats. This is on. Yeah. This is on the bed. Fire! So yeah, you pull the triggers. All right. That's the yeah, the larger. 
Yeah. You also have to point it. Yeah. Point yeah. Point yeah. Point yeah. Point yeah. Yeah. Point yeah. 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 Yeah.
up. Good stuff. All right. <laughs> So the best thing about the Nintendo Switch is definitely its portability. The fact that you can just pick it up off of the home dock and just take it anywhere and continue on with your game is fantastic. So if you're in the middle of a Zelda dungeon, you don't have to stop and then wait till you come home to keep playing it. You can just take it wherever, in an Uber, in the park, outside, wherever you want. And that's really what you're paying for, for the, with the Nintendo Switch. You're paying for that portability and you're paying for that idea. So I'm really looking forward to seeing if the Nintendo Switch catches on and we see a bunch of people outside in the wild with Nintendo, playing their Nintendo Switches. Uh, it could just be like Pokemon Go. Instead of phones, people will be playing the Nintendo Switch. So we'll see. It's still too young to know if that's going to be the case, but early, early interest is pretty high. So it'll be interesting to see how it catches on as the year progresses. Stay tuned for my full review of the Nintendo Switch. I'm still checking it out, checking out the launch game lineup and seeing how it acts in the wild and at home in the dock. So stay tuned for that next week. And for all that and more, be sure to keep it tuned to thepostgazette.com. Thanks a lot for watching.